If you want to be part of the intellectual pro property school, we have a new procedure. You must fill out an app. The app is below. Now, why are we doing this? We want to have the best students to have the best outcomes as we get onto this training. Years and years ago, I used to be poor. I'm talking about couldn't buy food poor. And I went from that situation to driving a brand new Porsche. And this transformation is something I can teach you because number one, I've done it. Number two, I've been teaching people since 2014. And it's really about having the right mindset and everything and to ensure that we get the right people. So go below, fill out the app. And if we have a meeting in mind, then you will be scheduled for a live phone call or a live Zoom session where we can discuss your future in the intellectual property school. So let's go ahead and get into the video today. The wealth gap. What is the wealth gap? It is the difference between what the highest people on the net worth scale and the lower people on the net worth scale. And the people on the higher end of the net worth scale are anywhere from 40 to a thousand times richer than people on the lower economic scale. And we see this all through society because right now there is something that's happening in America where the average American, and this is people who have single person income of 30 to 40,000 a year, which creates a household income of 70 something thousand dollars per year, are not in a position to buy a house. This is one of the things that is happening in these United States of America and is getting to the point where the average person with average income will not be able to afford a brand new car unless things are sliding. In New York, you've typically had people pay half their income in rent for years. And this is something that's becoming the new norm. The 40 year mortgage is becoming something that I feel is very dangerous. So what is, how did this wealth cap get on the, on the map? There are some people who feel that there's a room full of billionaires who meet up every year and they sit down and they collectively think of ways to keep the average person poor. That's one thought. There's a lot of people who feel that thought. I've talked about this before and people's like, yeah, you know, average people, but you know, there's a collective bias to keep the person poor. So they would be forced to work for these rich people. And I really thought about that. And I really thought about that. And I was like, okay, so Years and years ago, when I started my first business, the billionaires in this collective left me out of the equation because one of the things that I have found out, and I will speak for myself, is the harder that I work, the luckier that I become. And I did not grow up in a wealthy household. I grew up a product of a single parent household we were poor. We didn't even have indoor plumbing when I was a kid until I was about eight or nine. And that's when they installed indoor plumbing into our house. And one of the things that I consistently see is this wealth gap isn't by design. It is because people do not want to do the things that they should do to become wealthy. And I know I'm going to get a lot of blowback and there's these secret, these billionaires, they meet, they're trying to keep us poor. And I got a question for you. If that's the case that the billionaires are meeting in the room and they're putting these objectives in place to keep you poor, I have a question for you. Why do we in the United States of America have to import engineers, data scientists? There are certain industries that would not be able to thrive 
if we did not import the talent to drive these industries. So if there's this wealth gap that is designed by the secret room of billionaires, why do we have to import data engineers? Why do we have to import computer programmers? Why do we have to import these people for these companies to drive? I'm about to tell you, and this lies where the wealth gap is seated. You got people who don't want to do the hard things. <clears throat> this is why we have to import these engineers because we have a lot of Americans that don't want to take a math class. They don't want to do anything hard. This is something that we consistently see. And for the Americans who choose to go to school to take the hard courses, the technical courses, the STEM courses, they're in that top 10%. There's no wealth gap for those folks. So what I'm gonna say for a lot of people, and there are some social corners to this wealth gap, and I'm gonna explain to you what I believe them to be. The number one social corner to the wealth gap is the personal environment that you were born in. If you were born to a single mother who was the product of a single mother who was the product of a single mother, this creates a pathological path for you to repeat the same things that your great grandmother, your grandmother and your mother have done because it's become a family legacy of low achievement, low accomplishment, not going to school. It's become the family norm. And that's a social construct of this thing that creates the wealth gap because I put a comment and once again, this, this is where we get really, really sensitive because one of the reasons that so many women are poor is because they continue to have children out of wedlock. I know I'm gonna get a lot of knocks for saying that, but this is one of the surest ways to make sure you'll be poor. And I know I'm gonna have some super independent, successful single mother. Hey, I'm a single mother. I got three kids, I'm a millionaire. And I would say congratulations to you, but you are not the norm. Right now, I'm gonna say it, and it's gonna be very, very harsh. You got women out there selling themselves on the street to provide food for their children because that's the only thing they can do to make some money. So being a single putter, mother, it, being a wealthy, and there are some wealthy single mothers. There's some single mothers who went to nursing school. There's single mothers who went to law school. They stuck it out, they did the things, and they have really good careers, and they can provide a good lifestyle for their children. These mothers do exist, but they're not the norm. And this is one of the things that when we get into looking at what keeps people on the wrong side of the wealth gap is two things, behaviors and habits. When I was on the wrong side of the wealth gap, my behaviors and habits were pretty much wrong. My behaviors and habits did not facilitate me doing anything to move me toward the wealthier side of society. There was nothing in my pathology. There was nothing in the things I was doing. I used to go to work and I would come home and I would chill. And I did go to college for a hot minute, didn't graduate. And if I can go back and look at who I used to be and who I am now, these people that the person I used to be would not even enter into the same building as the person I am today. And one of the things is, if you want to change your position in the wealth gap conversation, there's one thing that you need to do, education. You need to get as much education as possible, whether it's formal education, an online course, or a rigorous program of self-education. This is the one thing that you need to do to change your position in the wealth gap. This is what I did. I went ahead and I got, I would say my education process started with rent a crate 
actually started before Rent a Crate. Started with uh, Earl Nightingale, Dr. Joseph Murray, Tony Robbins, and Meditation. And that started, I would say, in 1998. So from 1998, 99, 2000, 2001, 2002, I was in a rigorous self-education program for four years of reading books, listening to certain radio shows, listening to audio tapes, and I did spend money for my self-education. And this is what moved me out of being broke Dick Danny, a guy who wanted the best out of life, but just couldn't figure out how to get it, just couldn't figure out how to get the money, how to, just couldn't figure it out, just couldn't figure it out. And one of the things that I look at is who I used to be, and this is another thing, and this is where education becomes. I used to be not horrible with money, but I wasn't really good with money. I didn't have a lot of crazy habits, but I, I did some very dumb stuff back in the day. When I got my first credit card, which was a Citibank credit card, and my second credit card, which was a first union uh, credit card, literally in two months, both those credit cards were maxed out. I charged them up to the limit, and then I got to the point of making minimum payments. Bad, bad, bad financial habit, bad financial habits that I had. I had quite a few bad financial habits that kept me on the lower side of the wealth gap. Um, one, I used to go to pawn shop all the time. I would pawn my DVDs, I would pawn my CDs. I did rent to own, rent to own of a washer and dryer because my credit was non-existent. It wasn't, it was just terrible. So I went through a process of doing many things that were financially bad that took more money out of my pocket. Didn't put money in my pocket, took money out of my pocket going to the pawn shop. I, I then pawn shop, DVDs, rent to own. The worst thing I did was a title pawn, title pawn lawn. I actually ended up losing the car. So that Glendon Cameron back in the day was a fiscal hot mess. Now I am a person sitting on a million dollars worth of business credit, $500,000 worth of personal credit, money in the bank. I mean, it's a completely different life. And it was because I chose to rigorously self-educate myself. This is one of the reasons that so many people stay in the same spot. And I will say, since we're now doing an application process to get into the intellectual property school, we've got some people who are putting down some fantastic answers, who are just literally opening up their hearts to explain what they wanna do, how they wanna do it. It is a very different process. So shout out and thank you to the people who are filling out the applications. I appreciate you guys. And that's the ticket all of the self-education that you can get. Because right now, uh, I'm running a test and I'm not going to get into the details of the test, but I see people on YouTube who have no idea how to use this new technology, none whatsoever. And they're putting up videos from a very haphazard way of conducting experiments. And this is part of the reason that the wealth gap is so pronounced. It's because we are heading toward a nation of renters where a lot of people who are outside of the wealth gap will not be able to afford a home. Even if they have good credit, fairly decent job and money to put down, they will not be able to afford a home. And I don't think that's going to change significantly going forward. So what do you have a choice? This is America. Once again, I put up videos. This is America. It's quite expensive to live well in America. It is what it is. So you got a choice. You can prepare yourself to live well in America by getting all the education that you can, or you can move to Portugal or some other country where the cost of living is much cheaper. But 
That's what liberated me from being on the other side of the wealth gap. It's education. Get all of the education that you can, whether a formal education. If you get a formal education, make sure you get something in STEM. Make sure that you get a degree that's kind of hard to get. Or if you're gonna do what I did and the self-education process I did, the fastest thing, and it, it, it was kind of mind blowing once I sat down and thought about it, that I lived in this boarding house for two years. And then that third year, I got on the self-education program. And literally when I got laid off from T-Mobile, which at the time they used to call voice stream, from the time I got laid off from T-Mobile, it took me 18 months to get in the position where I had $250,000 in the bank. And that's the power of self-education. And that's the power of education. And that's the power for getting all of the education that you can. Because there are many people out there who feel that they can snap their fingers and change their life. My self-education program was about four years of hard work and really 18 months in, I had made some significant moves and significant strides and positioned myself to be in a really good spot in terms of being a person who did go to college but did not graduate. And that's another thing. You've got to look at what you're going to college for, how you're setting yourself up, how you want to uh, position yourself to be successful in the future. And once again, I don't care what anyone says, it all comes down to education. The more education that you have, the greater your chances of being successful and wealthy. And that 250,000, that's a critical number. You will see your life dramatically change at 250,000 per year of annual income in most of the United States. You will be doing better than average in New York and you'll be doing better than average in California because you can afford to live fairly well in New York and California at 250. But this is the pathway, changing your educational pathway and getting all the education that you can. Because right now I'm seeing a lot of what I call internet tactics like Literally every day I have someone approaching me to do short form content. Now, this is one of the reasons that I don't do short form content from an educational perspective. I know YouTube is pushing short form content, pushing it out. You can start a short form content YouTube channel, get to a million, two, three million subscribers in a year. But Financially, short form content doesn't pay off. Do you know that TikTok has lost like 7 billion? Did you know that? This, why do I know this? Because I, I, number one, from a philosophical standpoint, I don't believe in short form content from a philosophical standpoint, because this goes back to the self-education. I know how the mind works. I know that typically you can make money with short form content. You can sell things with short form content. But I, let me go ahead and give you an example. Let's call this a widget. Let's say it's $39.99. You can sell that with short form content. Now, I used to sell office furniture. My biggest deal was $3 million. You think I could have sold a $3 million deal with short form content? Ain't happening. So yes, you can make money with short form content. You can sell things with short form content, but you cannot sell a $6,000 course with short form content. You cannot sell a $100,000 product with short form content. And this, this is one of the things that from a philosophical standpoint that I understand that people's attention spans are really getting short. And I also understand there's two audiences. There's an audience that really loves and appreciates short form content. And there's an audience that loves and appreciates long form content. And I have, bam, put my stick in the stand and I'm like, I'm just gonna do short, long form content. I'm gonna stay far, far away from short form content because typically the viewers that short form content gets you are not the viewers that you can build anything with. I've said that, I've spoken my piece. So, you know, once again, it's education. Education, 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 and education. So we got a lot of stuff that's coming on. 
So if you want to be part of the intellectual property school where you make money with your mind, using your mental energy, go below, fill out the application below, and we got a lot of stuff that's going to happen in July because I'm going to make it faster, better, and I'm going to make it where you can start making money because I'm going to push it. I'm going to say you can start making money within three months because when I look at my experience of getting into the intellectual property strategy, I started the YouTube channel August. So August 6th, September 6th, October, I was making money within three months using intellectual property. And this is the stuff that I'm going to teach you how to do in the course. So if you want to be part of the intellectual property school, go below, fill out the application. And if we have a meeting of minds, then we will schedule a live phone call or a live Zoom session with you to discuss your future in the intellectual property school. My name is Glennon Cameron. I'll see you guys in the next one.